Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, I'm delighted to be with you today. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, can you see my screen share there? Just a I'm going to yes, be ma'am. sharing with you the Training the Trainers program and particularly how we have cascaded the Training the Trainers program throughout the UK and also overseas. And it's this cascade and able to deliver it in local areas. This has been particularly useful during the COVID period. I'll also be describing how we have used a remote delivery of education during the COVID period as well. So the aim of the Training the Trainers program is, able, is to improve the delivery of training um, at all levels for all trainees. Uh, we know that the college has an important role in training because they set the curriculum um, right at the beginning, uh, which then drives the learning objectives for the trainees and also the teaching provided by the trainers, and that hopefully results in learning. But the college is also important at the other end of training in setting the assessments, as you've just heard from Fiona. Hopefully assessment uh, drives learning, but also is a measure of how valuable that learning is. Uh, but there's this whole area in the middle between the curriculum and the assessments where training is delivered largely in the workplace and largely focused on patients. So it means that the trainers in every unit across the whole country needs to be training to the required standard in order to be able to provide this training. But as a Royal College, we've got to be able to oversee that and ensure that training is being delivered properly. So the benefits of good training is to shift the learning curve to the left. Um, in the good old days, um, a, a trainee would pick up learning as they went along. But with a good training the trainers program and well-trained trainers, um, you can enhance this by lots of preparation beforehand, making sure that the early phases of learning are very rapid. And then it means that the trainees can get much more involved in the clinical experience learn more from that and overall they can learn faster and reach a higher level. But all this requires a lot of input from our trainers and our trainers need to use very good training skills in order to make the most of this time. So our training program is competency based. That means that our trainees need to develop skills at the top of this uh, learning pyramid. The knowledge and comprehension they can obtain by self-directed learning um, through reading, through web, um, and this is, can be quite readily assessed um, in some of the knowledge-based exams. But in order to be a really good professional, they need to be able to apply this knowledge to know how to um, analyse what's going on, to make judgments, to make evaluations. So we end up with a workforce that's appropriately trained for their role, and that all the team members are working at their highest level of ability. And they've got to have really high level skills that are necessary for decision makers, both in the clinical setting, but they also need to have um, all the generic skills in um, training and management and leadership and research that go with that clinical role. And so the trainers need to be very well trained in how to deliver this upper portion um, of the learning pyramid. So just to give you an outline of the um, training structure we have in the UK, um, here is the trainee in their unit. They have a single educational supervisor who guides their personal and professional development. And then they have a whole series of clinical supervisors. And it's the clinical supervisors that oversee the safe clinical learning and experience in every session they do during the week. Each unit has a college tutor and they're responsible for coordinating all the supervisors and trainees within their department and making sure that the training in the department runs well. Overseeing all this at the regional level um, is the training program director. We have 24 regions in the UK and it's the training program directors that, um, that deliver um, the training maintaining and assessing standards to make sure that everyone is doing their job properly um, in these units. And the training program director works with the regional education advisor and the regional team 
um, to be able to deliver this education and training. So our Training the Trainers programme really provides training for all trainers at all levels of this structure. So the, 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 the core courses that we run um, are these in green. Um, the main course is the supervisor level course, which um, runs over three individual days um, and it's repeated every year. And the course is pretty much the same with a bit of evolution each year. Um, the college tutor induction day is very specifically to the role of the college tutor, but also introduces them to some of the necessary skills as well. And a slightly modified version of the supervisor course is delivered for trainees, because after all, our trainees are going to be the trainers of the future. So this is the core delivery of the Training the Trainers programme. We also deliver TTT at advanced levels. Um, so the, the advanced course for the TPDs and the regional advisors um, is different every time. Um, and we're really trying to encourage these high level trainers to be the best they can possibly be um, and to all help develop each other. The regional leads and the regional teams um, each are responsible for a different area of education and they have courses um, that are specifically designed to develop them in those different areas. And again, they're learning from each other, developing over time. In addition to this UK-based program with the core and the advanced levels, we also deliver overseas training the trainers, and this is to Africa and also to Indonesia. So just thinking about the supervisor level courses, they are very much focused on how to deliver training. So it's what the trainer will be doing with their trainees in their units. Um, it's got a theoretical basis, but we don't, we integrate that into it. We don't really teach the theoretical basis. Uh, we teach what the trainers need to be able to do. It's split into three days. So we have um, teaching and learning on day one, supervision skills and assessment on day two. And then day three is slightly higher level on program management and also how to manage the trainee in difficulty. And this is just examples from the course that we've delivered in Africa. So you can see there's a very high emphasis on um, practical skills. Um, they've done some preparatory work beforehand, before the course, but there's work in pairs, for example, setting aims and objectives. Um, here they are teaching practical skills um, using the four step technique. Um, there's quite a bit of role play, for example, for giving feedback for appraisals. Um, but here, as well as the role play, we have an observer. So there's peer-to-peer -peer feedback going on during the session. Um, there's a role play here for training and difficulty um, and a slightly larger group so they can all discuss um, how, how they can develop their skills. Um, there's a lot of um, small group discussions about various topics. And one of the most important areas is at the end of every course where delegates are planning how they're going to implement their newly found skills when they get back to their units. In the advanced level course, um, in the UK, these are, these are single days. In Africa, we ran it as a, as a three-day course. And this is different every time. We choose specific topics of interest um, for discussion. There may be new, new topics or complex topics that just take things a stage further. For example, this particular advanced course in Africa, we were teaching how to cascade training the trainer's skills. So having been on the course several times, they were then actually delivering different aspects of the course. Either we split them into four different groups. So we had four people practicing presenting material um, to their delegates. Uh, they were facilitating, um, for example, supervising the practical skills. Um, and here you can see they were also involved in large group teaching as well. But the key part of this was, yes, they were delivering the course that they'd heard before, but the real learning came from the peer-to-peer -peer feedback and the amount of benefit they gave them that was huge. And we could see that by the way individuals developed um, over the three day period of the course. So how do we go about delivering the training the trainers faculty? Um, so the important thing is that um, this is a, a sustainable process. So obviously we have um, a, a lead who runs a course. They've got a faculty who help them um, deliver the main materials but we also have a group of facilitators um, who are helping the small groups to develop their skills um, during the, the, the small group practical sessions. And of course, on every course, uh, we have all the delegates as well. But all the delegates who come on the course are not just learning about being trainers, 
they're also learning about being TTT faculty as well. So when we do the practical skills on the courses, um, we can select out those who are obviously best, and then they come on courses as facilitators. So they see the course again, but they get involved. Once they've facilitated a few times, they then become a faculty member, and some of them will eventually be a lead. So as well as delivering the course, we're developing the faculty at the same time. Um, and this is on the national program. And, but then it means that these faculty members, they come from all over the country, they're members of our regional teams, and they can then help deliver courses on a regional basis. And these are combined with our um, central, centrally developed courses. I mentioned the regional teams there. These are regional educational teams, which are set up in all four, uh, sorry, all 24 regions of the country. Um, they're coordinated by the regional educational advisor. Um, there are various trainees and others who are there because of the role they hold at the college. We include the training leads, such as the training program director. But within every region, we have somebody who's responsible for all the different areas of education. So it means that every region has got a TTT lead. And within the regional team, the TTT lead might have support from, for example, the postgrad lead or the people responsible um, for teaching leadership or research. Um, they may be actually feeding into um, the people who are providing simulation or the exams leads, for example, and mentoring and budgeting is very important to part of TTT as well. So this team all work together to help each other to deliver education and training within every region of the country. And it's this kind of cascade model which has been really useful during COVID because as well as being able to deliver um, courses um, nationally, remotely, it means they can still get that facilitated um, development of skills locally. So we have the, the college leads here who provide courses for the um, regionally based um, TTT leads and then the regional TTT leads can um, cascade this to their individual units. But the important thing is that these regional leads can all work together to give peer support and to develop their learning. We obviously started off with the ophthalmology specialty training program, which Fiona was talking about, uh, but then um, we've realized over the last um, number of years that it's really important that we build this team into a multi-professional team. So we've developed over about the last five years, the ophthalmic practitioner training program. Um, this um, is based on and reflects the OST training program. And part of that has been to develop a whole um, TTT group, a parallel TTT program for trainers um, of the practitioners. So usually for the OST TTT, it's the ophthalmologists who are involved. Um, these ophthalmologists are also involved in the practitioner TTT, but also we involve the orthoptists, the optometrists and the ophthalmic nurses who are not only the learners on the course, uh, but the senior members are also part of the training the trainers program. So we've also been cascading our Training the Trainers program in Africa. We've had a, a program running for over eight years now with, the, um, with COEXA, which is the College of Ophthalmology of Eastern, Central and Southern Africa. And we have a, a, a strong link between our two colleges. And this is supported by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And this was um, a meeting at one of the um, inaugural um, sessions we had um, to get the whole um, link between the two colleges off the ground. So um, training the trainers um, has basically been cascaded um, with COEXA um, and the college together over 10 countries within Africa. It was part of the Vision 2020 program and therefore um, we had 2020 as our, as our final endpoint. Um, and so it's split into um, pairs of years in the first phase, we needed to create the ethos of training. Um, in the second phase, we were developing skills in trainers. In the third phase, embedding training processes into the training programs. And then in the fourth phase, it was how, the, how training and the TTT program could be cascaded sustainably um, into the future. So in phase one, we needed to create the right ethos. And um, it really did show that in different parts of the world, we come from very different cultures. 
Um, and what we want to try and do is to share the best bits of those different cultures as to how they promote training. Um, and it's, but this collaboration was very much a two-way learning process. So um, as well as going out to Africa to help them develop, develop their trainers and training programs, we brought an awful lot back home to it um, with us. And our training the trainers program has really benefited from this link. Um, so in terms of creating an ethos, um, it's things, for example, that training skills can actually be learned. So it is worth teaching them. Um, standardization is really important, even if training is being delivered by lots of different universities, um, then we need to have standardized levels. And there's this whole concept of trainees can be supported through supervision. Um, and I think I was really surprised that this was one of the biggest differences. And I think one of the things we felt also was that we had to find ways that hierarchy didn't limit um, how trainers were trying to develop. So in the second phase, um, we were, um, it was a phase where we were rolling this out to more people. So we attached the courses either to existing events, such as to um, the exams that were happening. So we trained all the examiners in TTT before the exams. Uh, we went to their annual Congress. And so it meant that more people then had access to this. And what we were concentrating on here was developing the skills. Um, so you know, different ways of teaching, uh, making it interactive, how to teach practical skills, you know, embedding feedback and appraisal processes, and also conversation techniques for managing trainees in difficulty. So in phase three, having um, upskilled a lot of trainers, we then set up a more formal structure for this delivery. So in each of the 10 countries, we appointed a lead. Um, this is Chiku, who's the lead for the whole COEXA program. So we had a lead in each country, plus a faculty member, plus a facilitator in each of the 10 countries. So we had a structure um, through which we could start cascading training the trainers. Um, and then they, they could, good in the same way as in the UK, once they were trained up, they could then start to deliver this on a national or institutional basis. And then phase four was really about um, doing this sustainably. Um, you know, although we all love going out to Africa and helping them, um, it is really important that they are able to continue delivering this themselves. Um, so at this advanced course, which is the one that I showed you earlier, um, we taught them how to actually deliver the TTT program. Then by 2020, COVID has hit. Um, so they remotely joined our advanced TTT program that we were running for all our UK advanced group and we had the African advanced group joining. So we really had the benefit um, of the, the, the two different cultures working together. And then after, after the, 99, sorry, the 2019 course, it was so interesting to see how they went into their units, into their countries, and they actually implemented the TTT process. So you can see here in Mozambique, they ran introductory TTT sessions for staff from two different hospitals. In Zambia, they implemented the appraisal process and all the conversation skills that are needed for that. Um, and in Kenya, here's a session where they're teaching their trainers about um, appraisal prior to implementing it there. And in Tanzania, they had a train the trainer session in their National Ophthalmology Society meeting. Um, so this was so encouraging to me because it's one thing people turning up and coming to the lectures, doing the practicals in a classroom setting. Uh, but what's really important is this is then implemented in the regions across the 10 countries in Africa. And as a, really as a result of um, COVID, we were always planning to do something for the day 6-6-2020, so now it's the 6th of June 2020, as a big celebration at the end of the um, Vision 2020 programme. Um, but actually COVID almost came to our rescue because it was very much easier to do this online than it was to try and do it in person. So we ran a whole day um, with all these stakeholders and we basically showcased all the links that there are um, between these different countries and um, how different units have worked together to promote partnerships in eye care. Also during COVID, we've very much developed our telelearning program. And so now we can uh, we share materials um, before sessions. We can run events in a distributed fashion. So while we're 
delivering materials within London, we can have groups elsewhere and maybe as far afield as Africa with facilitators who've been trained um, to help them with the practical skills, but we can actually share our knowledge. Um, these sessions can then be recorded, they can be uploaded onto the telelearning system um, so that they can then um, be used for future learning. And as a Royal College, we have a new um, telelearning um, system, our learning management system called RCOPF Enlighten. This means that we can provide um, materials for learning in all different modalities. We can provide them anytime, any place, anywhere. Very efficient and flexible way of delivering education. So it means that learners can then build their own learning pathways or they can follow um, ready set programs such as the training the trainers program. Uh, we have groups of educators um, who can have high levels of functionality and this delivers a modern digital solution promoting lifelong learning and professional development. So the outcomes of the Training the Trainers programme and our links with Africa um, have, been, have been massive. In phase one, we were treating more than a million patients, sorry, more than a million patients per year were touched in some way by the Training the Trainers programme. In phase two, we published our results in Globalisation Health. In phase three, we established the national team members and also started a TTT programme in Indonesia using the same model. By phase four, we trained over 100 participants. We had 23 faculty members and within the structure of COEXA, a TTT subcommittee had been created. As I mentioned before, this has also had huge benefits to us on basically a, a personal level and also for the TTT programme um, within the UK. So looking forward to the future, um, our advanced courses are now combined with the COEXA supervisor courses. Um, hopefully we can deliver more uh, remote joint modules uh, with the UK. And then the COEXA countries are now looking to cascade TTT to adjacent countries and particular in West Africa. And just in the way that we've involved our medical, our um, eye care professionals, um, the COEXA countries are wanting to upskill their non-medical professionals as well. So really cascading the Training the Trainers program has enabled us to um, improve the level of training um, across the whole country, but also with other countries in the world. Thank you.